I don't think I've ever come to begin to speak following somebody that's called me a failure before. So thanks for that, Mark. But I know what you mean. It's like when you've been in it for as long as we have and you're hearing so many negative things still and just not enough of the positive kind of clarity that we've, we've been sort of reaching for, it can, be, it can feel like failure, absolutely. We are too slow, we're all too slow. But I'm gonna give you a talk today which is looking at all the things I think we can do and um, I'm gonna sort of be thinking about where circularity fits in this picture um, of net zero 2030 and you know how far we've got and, and really my focus is what's design doing and how does design need to change for us to sort of really achieve all that we can achieve. Um, so next slide please. So I'm going to do a quick hello about me and then I'm going to tell you seven stories, uh, seven different shirts and then give you some pointers at the end about how to stay in touch and, and how to kind of keep connected to these ideas. Next, please. So my background is in making textiles for fashion. And for 20 years, I've been taking secondhand garments and remaking them and reselling them. Uh, most recently, they haven't been sold. Actually, they kind of get remade and then they get put into exhibitions. So I'm sort of not really trading using these shirts anymore. I'm using them to really understand design and what needs to change. Next, please. And in order to really understand and get context and get the, bit, the full picture, I work as a research center director and I work on projects very similar, in fact, the ones that, that Jesse mentioned in the introduction, um, consortium level, across Europe and beyond, working multidisciplinary with scientists, with brands, with policymakers, with user behavior experts. And um, a lot of what I've got to show today really is coming from um, a project called Mistra Future Fashion, which was actually sort of ran from 2011 through to 2019. Uh, and I think what we, what we found was that as designers, we came in to, we come into these sorts of projects, the expectation is that we'll just make some pretty stuff uh, with the stuff the scientists might be doing and we all might make a bit of progress. And you know what, it's not like that at all. We've actually got design now working um, in a more level playing field with the material scientists, with the other disciplines, really looking for new models, innovative solutions right from the outset and, and uh, not just sort of being seen at the end of the supply chain. And that's a big sort of um, big thing to note. Design has got to be in there from the beginning and not just taking the materials um, and the products being offered to them at the end and making something um, at that stage. Next slide, please. Now, this is quite important. Um, if you could put that full screen, I might be able to thank you. Um, Circularity will not solve everything. So Boris Johnson recently said that recycling was a red heron. Thanks, Boris. Fantastic. <laughs> Our Prime Minister saying things like that. What he really means, one would assume, is that it's part of the picture. And for fashion and textiles, this report on the left comes from Wraps Textiles 2030. We can see that by making, by using recycled materials, and making our products recyclable in fashion, we can have up to a 26% reduction. Now, that's a kind of an estimate figure, and that's given the current state of um, fiber development and technology. We're working with the assumption that actually that can be much greater. But circular fashion in its sort of um, tightest definition is making products that can be recycled, but we can do so much better than that. We can make them from recycled materials in the first place. We can have new um, production models, ways of working. We can grossly extend the amount of time that we're using products. Um, we can use renewable energy in the, in the supply chain, um, really essential. Biggest gains can be made from switching to, to renewable energies at factories. Um, we can get our, our customers to shop 
always coming on foot, bicycle or public transport. That's a 3% change in uh, the Swedish fashion industry when they, when they did this study. So circularity is part of a bigger plan. That's the first thing we have to sort of bear in mind. Next slide. So I'm gonna take you through seven shirts. And in these seven shirts I've made over this period of time, I found out something new and it meant something in terms of what I think design needs to do and how we need to teach design differently and do design differently. First of all, as a designer, get in there and find the, the supply. What is waste? What kind of waste are you going to work with? Um, if you're gonna build a business around this, is that waste supply um, big enough, constant enough, um, and sort of in a way secure enough? because plenty of small businesses fail that, that are using sort of recycled or waste materials because the waste stream might dry up or it actually gets diverted somewhere more um, beneficial uh, and new values are found. So first of all, you've got to understand, you know, designers have to understand what the waste is that they're working with and understand that their job is to put it into the best possible next space. Next slide, please. Make it meaningful. We have this opportunity when we're, re when we're making circular fashion to recirculate it, loop it back around the system many times. As we're doing that, we've got an opportunity to build in attachment, uh, emotional meaning, um, a sense of ownership, a sense of, of, of kind of local connection. Um, so, I've always experimented with how sort of, in a way, personal you can get with um, a product that's maybe come from somewhere that's mass produced. So most of my shirts for a while would have been M&S polyester shirts found in a local charity shop, you know, and very ubiquitous. But by design, I'm able to add meaning and that builds this sense of connection then with the user and they're more likely to look after it, repair it and keep it for longer. Next slide, please. We need to find the best ways to, to make circular fashion. So what technologies are there that actually give a unique uh, finish and a unique offer from our recycled product, but are also incredibly low impact? So through my shirts, I've been experimenting with different technologies, laser, sonic, different printing approaches, as well as ways to make models for the remaking. So you can't take every single item individually. You have to have a sort of standardized way to um, remake something in, in a circular fashion context. Next, please. And you've got to understand what the industrial symbiotic loops are. So when I was talking before about waste streams, where is your waste stream? Where is it coming from? But what kind of loops can you um, marry up? So can you take, like in this example, waste from the textile industry, but through design actually loop it into another industry? Here I'm making jewellery from textiles, detachable elements that are on a shirt, but I'm actually taking sort of uh, waste materials and upgrading it um, into, and adding it into another uh, industry. Now, this is just my example. There are much better examples of industrial symbiosis, um, but it's gonna be the connection of the loops, the way we connect them up, that's really gonna give the circular economy um, its it sort of true value. Next, please. Bring other people into the process. So we can't just keep making stuff and chucking it out there and expecting people to, to go uh, and find it. You know, actually involving people in the circular economy makes total sense, more than any other model for fashion, in fact. So I was looking at the long tail as well, Jesse. In 2006, um, Chris Anderson's book came out. That's 15 years ago. Um, and the reason I was looking at it is I was arguing that sustainable textile design could have a role to play along that long tail, or even down to the individual textile designers that work on separate samples and sell them through an agent. You know, this very old fashioned, um, invisible, 
body of work that's often women um, making textile samples, that all of us, this long tail of textile designers that are invisible, if we're all working in much more sustainable ways, we're adding up our, a kind of potential impact. But the long tail is even more relevant now because with circularity, you have to keep things in a confined geographic footprint. It doesn't make sense otherwise. Read Walter Stahl. You've got to recirculate and reuse and then regenerate things with a smaller sort of geographic footprint because otherwise you're clocking up um, carbon uh, by shipping. And we can't do that because that's going to start to offset an impact on our, our sort of benefits and savings that we're making from making circular fashion. So what we've got to do is involve other people in those loops. So bringing them in to make, remake, design, use technology to, to help them design, it just connect, it, it sort of underwrites and um, amplifies these local loops, which is where all the value is. Next slide. Connecting at an emotional level. As designers, we've got to learn how to bring people in and then really get them engaged in the sustainability issues through clothing. So connecting activism um, with different generations, um, giving people voice, giving people agency, helping them to understand and bridge the world of sort of policies and um, uh, decision making that goes on all around us that we feel so, so sort of incapacitated by. We can help through design. Design can actually help people engage with the sort of political matters of the day and to sort of bring them in from um, on the issues that really matter to them. Next slide, please. And my final story is, is bringing it together. So all of those elements need to be considered by design for circular fashion. And it starts to look really exciting when they all come into one product. So this shirt is from the Trash to Cash project. Um, which was an EU Horizon 2020 project that finished in 2018. And the brilliant thing about this shirt is that it's made from blue recycled textiles. So blue cotton uh, has gone through a regeneration process. You can still see the residual blue there. It's made a lyocell like fabric for a man's shirt. And the business model is that that man shirt, men, when they shop, they find something they like and then they stick with what they like. And they, they maybe go back time and time again and wear it time and time again. So we worked with that kind of behavior pattern and we created a shirt that could be overprinted, overcolored several times so that it extends the life and it stays within a local circular loop and then that gets regenerated um, at the end of life. So it, it, bringing it all together is the science, the technology, the social, the business model, the connection and the user behavior pattern. It all has to come into this design brief. Uh, next slide. And it's also exemplified by uh, service shirt, which is the final um, pro prototype I made in the Mistra project, where we can see I set out to make a shirt last as long as possible, 60 years, but I sent it on this journey of moving between people's wardrobes, so between individual ownership to fashion library and back again. And the product was designed to, be, to transform. So it changes print several times and it finally becomes the lining of a jacket and then later jewellery and then later it goes into chemical recycling. So it's designing this future cycle of 50 years and at every stage knowingly sort of indicating what happens next. So this sort of being able to vision forward by 50 years is another design skill that's really important. My final sort of summing up slides, you know, but bringing it together is incredibly powerful. So this piece is short life fashion. So uh, Mark hinted at this in his talk, not all fast fashion is bad. And fast fashion is so popular and so powerful that it's ridiculous to be ignoring it. So we were experimenting in the Mistra project with clothing that lasts a few days and working with material scientists on compostable materials that give people um, a sensory experience, an aesthetic, an identity experience for a few days, and then it, it can kind of compost away. Um, and that's different to biodegradation. Biodegradation, Composting uh, 
is a nutrient for the soil and it adds to that regenerative agriculture that Mark was talking about as well. And my last slide or two is just really to say we're bringing all this together through things like the, the Hearware project. So please look out, get involved, watch us as we make circular local fashion. And my final slide is you can also get involved through World Circular Textiles Day, 8th of October every year, bringing everybody together, um, design, um, brands, manufacturing, policy, advocates, everybody. We've got to push on this together. So thanks, that's my, my, my bit.